So, um, thank you for your cooperation and thank you, Mayor, my friend. And we are, we go way back, mostly nights really, not just days back, but nights back somehow. In the world of uh, security of recent years and, um, I'm very happy that we cooperate here between our think tanks. He was a researcher, he left, and uh, we continue to collaborate. And I think this is definitely in the spirit of this current period. I would like to say a few words about the way that uh, we behave here, the audience, really. This recently. Uh, all the nerves are exposed, people are less tolerant, and everything is. Uh, sensitive and so difficult and I'm really happy to see that uh, when we listen here it's attentiveness recently I don't see it too much in those forums so maybe that's a result of this cooperation but I really salute you I would like very shortly to address them the words yeah, and I'm to put it this way i think that yeah. nothing that yeah. comes at any cost yeah. before yeah. i get why is it important yeah. to actually yeah. follow yeah. the yeah. path but any cost is yeah. always yeah. i'm not familiar with such a thing that any price everything has a price and everything has a calculated risk and cost an alternative cost and the cost of risk you can't say it any cost but you need to look at the reality and some things that I will be saying may be bad news in your eyes, but um, we need to improve the security situation of Israel. The victory is obtaining the objectives of the war and improvement of the security reality in the long term. Obtaining the purposes of the war, I don't want to expand on that too much, but improving the current security situation and that's something I want to address. The general regional deal will do that. There are three challenges where the national security of Israel policy led us to the bad situation, and those are the bad news. One of them is the um, resistant front led by Iran is perceiving itself as superior when it comes to strategy. Iran managed to create reality of the threshold of a nuclear state that at least cannot be threatened by any global entity that will be threatening upon them. No one has a threat that will be actually a military threat upon Iran. So they have almost immunity in this sense, and they're controlling four countries in reality. They managed to finish the multi-annual plan of uh, force build-up that was uh, planned for 17 militias all over the Middle East. Uh, Iran managed to connect through the very successful work as far as they're concerned through Nasrallah, the resistance front, the Palestinian resistance world to the resistance front of the Iranians. So as far as uh, Hezbo sorry, as far as Hamas concerned, they are the cutting edge of the regional strong superpower that reached strategic superiority upon Israel. If you are getting into this uh, mode, uh, we failed to do that in the past, you understand the audacity of 7th of October, you understand why it came from this process, this access should be changed. If we'll continue to do what we did before, we'll just make it harsher, we'll turn our situation to dire one, versus Iran, normalization with the Saudis. A regional normalization is not just the Saudis, in fact, and this will be impactful. I was tonight, tonight I returned from the Emirates, I don't even want to hear about the security ramifications of those regional agreements. You don't have to say it out loud, but in this neighborhood we all know who are the friends and who is behind it. So you don't have to say it out loud, but first is the bloc that recently managed to actually bond and reinforce itself and to tighten its roads. The other side didn't do that enough. There was a momentum, but we stopped and therefore we have a very 
a bonded, active block of resistance uh, supported by Russia actively and uh, indirectly by China. And now we can actually build a very powerful camp that is tenfold stronger, backed up by the Americans, strong with technology, strong with economics, strong in, uh, and definitely victorious. But this is not where we're going to. This is my uh, point of view. At any cost, but listen, but the cost is quite high, I guess. But again, the conflict between the Palestinians and Israel is so much has been said about the concept that we're broken. We all adopt different concepts and we all love or hate different approaches. And we can say that that's what brought us to this particular point. But the uh, management of the conflict and this hope that while everything is quiet, things will uh, dissolve, that was a mistake. It proved itself as a mistake. And this just doesn't work. It doesn't work. This split within the Palestinians system when Hamas traveled um, to one direction, Jihad went elsewhere, Fatah is going to different direction, allowed to manage this conflict better but build also a stronger Iranian-led uh, resistance front because each component managed to create a state of affairs where the state of Israel is operating versus a more complex system and that we need to bear in mind as well. The third matter um, we're in the world of the global competition and the global competition, those who are not in the space of right alliances, the partnerships will be erased and they're big blocks, but the smart ones create regional blocks in the Pacific. There is the Southern American one, the African block and the Eastern European block, if it will, it will conduct itself right with them, will be completely stuck between two superpowers. And we have this opportunity of um, finding the right strategic partnership. So versus Iran, when it comes to the Palestinian matter and then the global competition normalization with the Saudis will create a completely different uh, regional battle dynamics. The war, the other thing I wanted to say, the war is an opportunity. Any war requires the process of end of war in the end of which the arrangements and agreements. This is, this is how war ends. This is how it happens. So therefore, when we understand that this war, in fact, will be over at a certain point with a certain system of uh, exiting from this war, we can use this vision of normalization on the regional level and the day after that I will say a word about as a possible process. The other matter, this war created something else, it destroyed the area, completely destroyed the area, which is an amazing opportunity, in fact. Gaza Strip, with 70% of it, has been published actually twice in in-depth rehabilitation. It's a potential, not just for the sake of this rehabilitation, this is not that interesting, at least to us, but to use this rehabilitation as an attempt to significantly improve the state of security of Israel. We did something in Gaza quite big, really, now we can actually benefit from what we did and to conduct, okay, it happened, doesn't matter, let's cope with that. And the um, third matter is operational, but it's been mentioned here, but Tzachir uh, Negbe, the advisor to the government, Rafa, will be over very soon. The operation in Rafa will be over, the campaign in Rafa will be over. And the moment it's over, based on the operational plans of gas, of idea, we don't have another Rafa. But whether you like it or not, it's over. The dismantlement of brigades of Hamas is over where there will be another stage then, but we can take, we can benefit from this very fact that it will happen anywhere in the transitional stages between different steps of war and to receive a consideration for it or do nothing, initiate nothing, and this stage will be over anyway, and in the end of it we'll have to retrieve, and nothing will happen. So why shouldn't we be smart? You'll be doing it anyway, just benefit from it. There is a transitional stage after Rafa, do something big afterwards. There's no Rafa too. That's it. We've done 24 brigades of Hamas, the two other in El Burej and the Surat. Okay, let's do them as well. Okay, fine. So we dismantle the whole military uh, rank. It doesn't dismantle the Islamic Jihad or the idea of the Islamic um, Jihad 
you need to position an alternative idea for that. You can't use military force to overpower an idea. So what is the most important thing after we dismantle all the regiments of Hamas? The vision, the vision, the initiative, to decide what is the end game. We need to decide this is where I'm going, that's where I want to get. I want Hamas not to rule in Gaza, I want them to have a different civilian alternative address with the Israeli dominance in the field of security. I want to have here the regional expanded arrangements and settlements where Israel is an integrative part of other moderate states within the Middle East. I want the United States strong, present, dominant, influential upon all the countries because this is the country that is mostly supportive of Israeli interests at that point. doesn't matter what kind of administration will be at power. And the purposes of war on the return of hostages, of course, and etc. This is where I want to go. And from this understanding, I need to derive backwards what will be the right step for me to do now to obtain this end game. Obviously, we'll arrive to the point of dispute that we face. And I think we need to put it on the table. I'm happy that you did that before. And this is the Palestinian Authority as a component within the settlement on the day after. Why is it such a point of dispute and disagreement? Because no one will not step into this space without the invitation of the Palestinian Authority and Palestinian Authority involvement. Neither the Americans, definitely, not the Gulf countries, not the Emirates no one. Whether you like it or not, that's the reality right now. Obviously, we have problems with Palestinian Authority, no doubt. We're very happy with the Palestinian Authority in Judea and Samaria. And if there is a concern that they will collapse, we save them. It's not good for us, really, because they are addressing the civilian matters that allows us the security dominance in Judea and Samaria. We have problems with them, of course, there's a problem radicalization of educational curriculum, payment for the terrorist activities, corruption of the authority, the crisis of leadership. There's so many problems there. So the world tells us the following. The world, let's put it this way, the Emirates that have the money that can ignite those things will help you to address those problems. Let, let us help. And we say no. And we refuse. We will help you. The and you have to understand, really, I am, again, as I said, I received another lesson in uh, modesty, really. I've been, maybe in the end I will learn. But I've been taught many lessons. But people understand that, trust me, the ambassador probably knows that they understand the Arabs better than we do, the Emirates, the Gulf countries. They really understand it better than we do. They, they, they feed us. They, do, they know what they want to do. When they say, okay, Palestinian Authority, that is renewed, it's not the Americans saying that. When Americans say that, okay, instead of Muhammad Mustafa, we'll bring someone else, that's it. No, the Emirates, they mean business. They want to be accurate in the spirit of Palestinian Authority, and they offer it to us. They want to be involved. And they know that it won't happen on the first day. When we plan this war, when they plan this war, they knew exactly that in order to defeat a terrorist organization, it's a lengthy process. You won't be able to do that. It's not about the appearance of the authority there and the collapse of Hamas in one day. This is not going to happen. There will be an international Arabic coalition that will be taking care of the money controls and etc. It's clear for all. It's very clear that the land activity in the field of the distribution of humanitarian aid. If we don't do that, we enforce Hamas. We play to their hands. And obviously, at the end of the day, we'll have to divide Gaza so each neighborhood will receive aid. There will be local security, etc. It will happen. And it will be um, amalgam of international coalition. It will be a reflection of the Emirates, of Egyptians. Yeah, and the Palestinian Authority will partake as well. And in the middle, of those different layers of not allowing Hamas to distribute the aid, but to do it through someone who is supported by the international coalition, there will be a seat of Palestinian Authority that is renewed. And only according to their success, they will manage to take a hold all over the strip, whether they will succeed or not. That those who invited them, the international coalition, 
they will be missing their chance. I don't understand why can't we really recreate the victory we had during the Second Intifada. We did it once. If the alien would be looking at the state of Israel and say, but you managed to do that, it took you four years, why can't you do it again? You should do the same. What did we do then? Uh, gradually, for four years, it took us to empty this barrel, but uh, alongside with the current operations uh, that has to take place all the time, of course, we managed to build a civilian infrastructure that gradually created a different vision, a different authority, something you can call it hope, whatever, something that created the competition to the jihadi vision. Islamic Jihad is there without any competition. One you kill, you have four volunteers that appear. Look what happened in Jubalia. We killed 670 people and again there were 700. How is it possible really? Because today in Gaza, those are the heroes. Those who were killed, they want to avenge and come instead. This is the process where we need to create some kind of alternative, something that is not just a military alternative, but in a deeper infrastructures as well. Towards the end of this discussion, I would like to highlight uh, two comments I had, a little bit of a pessimistic comment, really. In the profession called strategy, there is what one would call the connection between the strategic purpose and the, and the operational form. Operational form. Uh, if you wanted the military regime in Gaza, and I agree, those who said that the military regime is the right way and the safest way to do that, yeah, you're right, absolutely true. It's expensive, it will put us in trouble with the world, a lot of difficult things, we won't be able to cope with Hezbollah at the same time, a lot of disadvantages, but the statement is true. You should have got it in the beginning. For now in the field, it's impossible for us to establish a military regime. The certain operational form of raids and entries and exits, this is not how you build a military regime. You want the military regime to make the decision on 14th of October that I want the way they made it. Uh, they always give an example that I don't like of Germans. And uh, Malta agree. They, committee, they decided to divide the uh, German into four different areas. Or the martial regime in Japan for two years, when you decide that the military knows how to do that. But again, for eight months now, you want to start a new, that doesn't work like that. The military knows how to do that when you get the instructions. Okay, there won't be a martial regime. There is new alternative civilian address that will go and accelerate within the years, but they didn't do that. So we didn't do A, and I will go for the B. No, we can't. We can't continue like that. And another word about the strip, really. Look, uh, decide the victory above the terrorist organization. Complete defeat, you need to dismantle the military structure of this organization, but you also need to fight against the main uh, entity that brings the success, which is civilian infrastructure, and we don't do that as well. Um, few more comments, really. The reform that we do here on our own after 7th of October, we all probably feel guilty, and twice a day we try to understand our mistakes, including uh, yours truly, more than once a day, really. But where exactly and how? Where we misread the reality? How did we misread the reality? We need to be very cautious and not to lose focus. I feel that the whole world, the concept that's called arrangements and settlements, is currently losing its glory. We will be parting our ways from any arrangements, any agreements, or anything. I can tell you one thing that in geopolitics, in the world of geopolitics, this component is extremely powerful and significant in managing the risks and etc. So if there is no such thing uh, of ignoring the reality, otherwise we will not promoting any security. We have so much criticism. Um, upon the conduct of the United States, and some of the things are really absolutely unacceptable. We need to remember two things. Um, what the administration of Biden did up to now and doing now is unprecedented. 
התשלום הפוליטי. The political price that President Biden is paying for what he did is absolutely impossible, inconceivable. It has to be weird that someone actually operates against their own political interest to such an outrageous way, and he does it. He will be losing the elections because of the um, swing, is, swing states, and it will be because of the support of Israel, and he still continues to do that, including today. It doesn't matter how many declarations he gives. And, um, so the, dom the more dominant they are, the more dominant will be the Israeli interest. Um, and if they will be isolated, it will be actually against. Um, so I think Afir talks about that and um, the behavior of Egyptians and um, others is actually dictated by the importance of the United States here. Before we're looking for alternative address and we start to hedge our risks, and before we start to hope for something else, <coughs> we need to recognize the good we have. Yeah, the um, alliance with the United States, defense alliance, there are disadvantages, but one thing it guarantees stability and backup in the long run. And we need to delve into details when it comes to the alliances. Yeah, it's not copy-paste. You need to create your own alliance. It's clearly a different one from the Saudi alliance, and we have to create an alliance that will be more significant than theirs, of course, but still. Thank you so much. And it was a fascinating conference, extremely successful day. Thank you.